All right, now we're doing 7Q, sum of minimums. This is by Izaz Ahmad, and 93% of people like it. So given a 2D list of size M by N, our task is to find the sum of the minimum values in each row. So basically right here, we're gonna have the minimum is one, the minimum is five, and the minimum is 20 in these ones. Uh, and so the function should return 26 because the sum of the minimums is this. Uh, so we're always gonna be given a non-empty list containing positive values and let's enjoy coding. All right. So one way we could do this, we could use for loops. Uh, and if we're gonna use for loops, we're gonna need to declare some variables. So the variables we're gonna use are gonna be like let result equals zero. We're gonna add everything to that one. Uh, we're also going to need an array f to put the minimums in. So let min, whoops, min equal an empty array. Let me put mins like that. And then we're also going to have a temporary uh, value right here. And I'll show you what we're going to use that for in a second. So let's do a for loop first. So we're going to say for let i equal zero. Well, i is less than r dot length i plus plus. All right. So now we're iterating through, and now we're, iter and we're iterating through this array of arrays, right? So what we need first <coughs> is we got to check to see if this is smaller than this. And if it is, keep it the same. But if not, switch them up, all right? So at the end, it's going to get to this 2, and it's going to be checking against this 6, and we're going to switch it up, all right? So for that, we're going to have the temp right here. We're going to say temp now equals... Uh, R at I at zero, all right? And then we're gonna do another for loop right under this, and we're gonna say for let J equal one, since the uh, temp is already at zero, all right? So let J equal one, we're gonna say while J is less than R at I dot length, whoops, dot length, we're going to say j++, all right, iterating through the array inside the array. So now we're going to say if temp is less than, uh, excuse me, if temp is greater than r at i at j, <coughs> pardon me, what we're going to say is temp now equals r at i, at j. All right, so now let's come down here and say, uh, let's look at what the temps look like. So let's come down here into the for loop and say uh, return, no, excuse me, console.log temp, console.log temp. All right, two, three, four, that's what we got. So what we wanna do is now we want to push every one of those into an, into the mins array. So we'll say right here, uh, mins dot push uh, temp like that. So let's come down here and say console dot log mins. Test that out. All right, now we've got this array going on. Do we even need to do any of that? Mm, no, we don't. Look at this. Watch. Forget that. Forget that. Forget the mins. We're just going to say result plus equals mins. No, temp. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Console.log result. 976. All right, cool. So we didn't even need this mins. Let's get this out of here. All right, that's all we needed to do. Cool. I was about to do a whole nother for loop for nothing. Uh, so let's say return result. Test that out. <clears throat> and look at that. Look, it works. And attempt it. And it works. It works. And it was pretty fast, too. Uh, but there's another way we could do this. We could do, make it a little more concise. Uh, let's do this right here, a little uh, slash star, control end star slash, control home, and enter. 
and we'll say const sum of minimums. All right, we're gonna have that equal r, and then we're gonna have an arrow right after that. So let's say console.log right here and test while we go. So let's see what r looks like. Test it out. All right, looks like the array with the arrays within the array. And so how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this right here? Uh, one thing we're gonna do we're going to do the reduce method on this stuff. Let me show you what that is. So we're going to say dot reduce. We'll say, we'll say in here, r, not r, ack, comma, uh, cur, and then we'll do this. Now what's all this mean? Let's come over here to the reduce method and see. So uh, the method, so the reduce method executes a user, user supplied reducer callback function on each element of the array in order, passing in the return value from the calculation on the preceding element. And the final result of running the reducer across all elements of the array is a single value. So uh, the first time that the callback is run, there's no, redu there's no return value of the previous calculation, but if supplied, an initial value may be used in its place. And we're gonna be using the initial value of zero because we've gotta do something special here. Uh, but the, the, perhaps the easiest to understand case for, res, for reduce is to return the sum of all elements in an array. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the minimums of each one of these and we're gonna add them all to this accumulator right here. Let's go down here to the uh, syntax. The syntax we're gonna use is this arrow function syntax with the initial value. We're gonna have the r.reduce accumulator, which is the ack, current value, which is the cur, and then we'll have the expression, which is gonna be ack plus cur, but we're gonna do something special to the cur. And then after this comma, we're gonna have this initial value, all right? So we're gonna, let me just add a zero right there. That's the initial value right there. And so we'll say ack plus cur. But the thing is we need to find the minimum of each one of these. So we're gonna use this math.min, right. hold on. We're going to use this math.min static method, which returns the smallest of the numbers given as input parameters, right? Uh, the syntax is uh, basically math.min and then comma separated values. So that being said, let's wrap this in parentheses, math.min. But as it said, comma separated values, and right now cur is an array. So if we run this, let's test it it's not gonna work, it's gonna give us a nan, right? So we've gotta turn this into comma separated values and for that we use spread syntax which allows an iterable such as an array or string to be expanded in places where zero or more arguments for function calls, that's what we're using it for, or elements are expected. So for this function call for the math.min, if we you can call it, it's a static method, but same thing basically. Uh, we'll say dot 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 in front of it and that'll turn it into comma separated values. Let's test it out. Nine, nine, 76, 76, looks good. Let's get rid of this uh, console.log and test it out. All right, and it works. And let's uh, attempt it. And it works, it works, all right? The thing is, um, we're gonna submit this one. But the thing is, in one of these comments I read somewhere, uh, I don't remember which one, maybe it's this one? Maybe it's this one right here. Uh, oh, this, yeah, this little stack overflow thing says the standard for loop to find min max is faster. And it's got this little thing for stack overflow right here that'll tell us it, tell us why. Uh, but basically, if you're doing like 10,000 loops, 10,000 arrays inside arrays and, and with thousands and thousands, you want to do it, uh, let's go to my solution. You're going to want to do this way because it's just easier because A, you don't have to go through the math.min thing. You don't have to do the thing where the uh, arrays have to get turned into uh, comma separated values. You don't have to go through this one. This is... Even though this is easy to read, it has like two or three more steps than this one. This one just goes through checks, through checks, 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 and just does it. And it's real fast. For, from what the thing said on Stack Exchange, I think the guy said somewhere 3x faster. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's your choice. 
Uh, best practice in my opinion. But you know, if you want to do standards, if it's just a standard arrays, this way is the easiest. Uh, very much like it, and we'll see you next time.